Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron here with a new Bible commentary series. Those of you that know me, you know I like Bible commentaries. I try to get and collect every Bible commentary. Hopefully we'll do reviews on every Bible commentary at some point. And this is a little two-volume set recently put out by Holman uh, based on the CSVB version of the Bible, the Christian Standard Bible. And so I'll let you see what it looks like. You can see it's very easy to follow along. It's good print, but a small Bible. So it's not going to, it's a small book, but it's not, so it's not going to be real comprehensive, but it packs a lot of information in here. Now, when I buy a book like this, I'm looking for just a few things. First of all, I look at the introductions to the book to see if they're conservative. And this series is not what I call conservative. It's what's being passed for conservative today, but that would have been considered very liberal in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and 90s. And so there has been a shift in evangelicalism. This is put out by Holman. Now, I'm also looking, so then once I know that it's got that theological bent, I then kind of look to see where modern evangelicalism is today and how it lines up with Scripture and lines up with the Bible. So I can get some things out of that. Um, and then I then just begin, you can get nuggets from this. Like if you just sit and read this, if you just made this a beside the recliner book or on the desk book and just start to read it, there's going to be some things that, uh, that you can learn out of this. Like I'm just reading, I'm here in the book of Acts and it says Candace was not the queen's name, but a title. Now I would check that with the Bible and see if that's really true. And if it's not true, then I know to put that in the arsenal that this is what some people believe. This is what some people are teaching. Um, Simon Magus, Simon the sorcerer, when it says they felt he was the great power of, of God, that reflects pagan language. So that's something good for me to know. Um, Early, and so 817, we're in Acts. This is something Pentecostals are going to want to look at. Early converts received the Holy Spirit at the laying on of hands by the apostles or evangelists. Some suggest this was God's plan to ensure that the new believers received trustworthy instruction, got connected to God's chosen apostolic leaders. So that is something interesting. Now I'm looking for like Jesus named baptism. Don't see anything. I do see a lot about miracles and healing. And so like when we go to Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, verse 38, Peter answer indicates three major components in conversion. One must repent, which means turning from sin. To be baptized in the name of Jesus publicly declares our repentance and faith, plus it symbolically identifies us with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit is given as a gift and seal of conversion, empowering the believer for the life of faith. So, And that comes like from James D.G. Dunn. So, three major components in conversion. I've got the Southern Baptist preaching Acts 2.38 now. Since my area is full of Baptists, I'm just going to say, did you know even your own commentary teaches what we teach? <laughs> and then I'm going to write and put in the front of this book, because this is where I write notes, and put Acts 2.38. Boom. They're getting it. Because there are some phraseologies I just read in that commentary on Acts 2.38 that are not perfect. But it's a bazillion times better than what they've ever believed before. So, great little series. Hope you get it. If you want, and they had them like for five bucks. I think this is amazing. So God bless. Talk with you later in Jesus' name.